Building web applications never really clicked for me until I started using React. That's been four years ago now, and React is still my go-to for almost every website that I build. But I'm pretty convinced the future of React is actually Next.js, and that's a pretty bold claim, so let's start this video with some level setting. This video is not going to be putting down other frameworks. Over the past four years, I've used Create React App, I've used Gatsby and other React frameworks, and as with most technical choices, it really depends. It works great for lots of people. Instead, what this video is going to be is me highlighting some of my favorite features of Next.js and why I personally feel like it's the future of React. Also, I have to address my bias. I am a contributor to Next.js and I made two courses on it, but this video isn't going to be prescriptive and I'll let you make your own decisions based on the information that you hear. So there's really five things that I wanna talk about today. We're gonna to do some background on Next.js. We're gonna talk about performance, developer experience, deployment, and then finally the community around Next.js. First, some background. So React is by far the most popular way to build web applications in 2020. And if you haven't heard of Next.js, that's okay. I'll give a quick high level overview. Next.js is a framework built on top of React that abstracts away some of the complexity while still giving you the flexibility to build scalable React applications. So with traditional React applications, you can only render on the client side. And Next.js gives you the flexibility to choose on a per page basis, whether you want to render on the client or the server or a mix of both. This hybrid approach makes it really scalable as you grow your application from maybe a few pages to thousands, you don't have to leave the bounds of the framework. It also allows you to choose which data fetching strategy makes the most sense given your use case. So if you're building a marketing page like a pricing page or a homepage, you want that to be static. But if you're building something that's highly real time, like say the Facebook news feed, you're gonna to want to render that from the server. One of my favorite parts about Next.js are the two APIs, get static paths and get static props that allow you to statically generate websites given dynamic data. And I use this all the time. A good analogy for React and its ecosystem is that React is like Linux and frameworks like Next.js, Create React App and Gatsby are like distributions of Linux. Now, when I started using Next.js, I adopted it because I needed to server-side render my React applications. Since then, the framework has evolved to support all the different data fetching strategies we've talked about. And at this point, I use it for basically everything. Next, I wanna talk about performance. And building performant React applications at a large scale is really difficult. And there's a lot of things that you have to consider. Next.js abstracts a lot of this complexity away for you so that you don't have to worry about all of the complexity of building a performant application and you just get that for free. So these are things like minifying JavaScript, doing code splitting, prefetching assets, ensuring that we render the minimal amount of HTML, caching builds, all sorts of performance optimizations that make it easier for you to ship a great experience to your customers. Let's talk a little bit more about one of those specifically, which is code splitting. So with Next.js's file system based routing, it allows you to scale your application to thousands and thousands of pages because when you are visiting a specific route, you're only loading the JavaScript for that page. Next.js also determines which JavaScript is shared across your application and extracts that out into shared chunks. Now you don't need to worry about this because like I said, the framework handles that complexity for you. You just know as a consumer of the framework that you're shipping a performant application. Let's also talk about Webpack, which Next.js is built on top of. It includes optimizations and plugins that handle things like adding polyfills and object rest spread, class properties, removing prop types in production, ignoring development only libraries, and even contributing back to the Webpack ecosystem to make it faster. It's also worth mentioning that Webpack 5 is being introduced in newer versions of Next.js. Now with all this being said, that doesn't mean that you need to ignore or forget about performance. Performance is still your responsibility as a developer to ship a great experience to your customer. What Next.js does though is it allows you to more easily get performance for free. Just don't take it for granted. The third thing that I want to talk about is the developer experience of using Next.js. 
As I mentioned previously, Next.js is built on top of Webpack and it provides an escape hatch for you to customize Webpack if you need to. So if you know Webpack, then you know how to use Next.js. One of my favorite features of Next.js is React Fast Refresh. And this was developed in coordination with the React Core team and the Next.js team. And as of right now, it's only used internally at Facebook and in Next.js. And this makes the development experience so much better. Essentially, it allows the React state to be preserved when making changes to components. So even if you introduce an error and you fix that error, that React state is still going to remain inside of your application. Speaking of errors, debugging inside of Next.js is really nice. A modal pops up that shows you specifically which line the error happened on and includes source maps to improve your debugging experience. I also love how many things are just included with the framework. For example, if you wanna do TypeScript, you just rename the file and it will automatically set up your TypeScript config for you. If you wanna add images or other public assets, you just make a new folder public and you add files in there and boom, they're just available. You didn't have to configure Webpack or do anything crazy. Same thing with CSS and SAS support. This used to be abstracted away as plugins and so many people were using it, it just eventually got merged right into the framework so that you don't have to do anything extra to use these files. On the topic of plugins, plugins are really hard to get right. You want your framework to be extensible, but you also don't want someone to have to set up seven or eight plugins every single time they start a new application from scratch. In my opinion, a lot of the fatigue in the React ecosystem comes from a lack of opinionated choices. And with Next adding things like image optimization and internationalization directly into the framework, this greatly improves the developer experience. The fourth thing that I wanna talk about is the deployment process. It's a common misconception that you can only deploy Next.js apps to Vercel. Now, Vercel is an amazing platform and it's arguably the best place to deploy your Next.js projects, but that doesn't mean that it's the only place. Essentially, anywhere that has a node server is going to be able to host your Next.js project. So for example, you can deploy to AWS and you can even self-host. For example, Apple uses Next.js in production and they self-host their Next.js project. There's also Next Export, which allows you to generate a completely static site and host it somewhere like GitHub Pages. Now with deployment, you also have to think about incremental adoption because the reality is you're probably working with a legacy application somewhere and you're trying to rewrite it to use React or Next.js. And one of the cool things about Next.js is it has support for redirects and rewrites directly in the platform. And this makes it really easy to incrementally adopt your application and send some traffic to your legacy project and some traffic to the new one. Okay, the final topic that I wanna to touch on is the community behind Next.js. As of right now, there are currently five people working full-time on Next.js, and one of those was actually a former main contributor to Create React App. The Next.js team works closely with engineers at Google and also the React core team at Facebook. And some of the members of the React core team have been outspoken about their love for Next and how the future of React might look a lot closer to a merger of the client and the server. One really cool stat about Next.js is that it's used in production at five of the Fortune 12 companies. So massive companies are building applications with Next.js and we're seeing this translate to community adoption as well. The GitHub discussions for Next.js are very active and just recently announced the Next.js conference had over 20,000 signups in the first two days. So there's an amazing thriving community behind Next.js and I think that's gonna help propel it forward as more people build hybrid React applications. So that wraps up the five sections that I wanted to talk about in this video. As a recap, we did a little background on Next.js. We talked about performance, developer experience, um, the deployment, and finally, the community behind Next.js. So hopefully you learned a little bit more about Next.js in this video and understand why I think it's the future of building React applications. I just wanna give a quick shout out to the Next.js core team and the contributors on Slack. If you disagree with anything here, have any comments, feel free to leave a message below on this video and I'll get back to you. Thank you.